then after that, we move to the distinct dimension. Right? Yes. Do this. Don't worry. So guys, please listen to the grammar and if you have questions, please ask them. I can't even find you. I can't find you. Then, like at the end of the page, go back. What is this? It's not. Just ignore the problem because I did not use it. 
So what the first one does is that it reports the train split, um, I think function of moving, I can't remember the train speed. So what it does is, in line um, 37, I um, splitted the um, um, data set into a train and a test data set. So if you notice, the test size is 0 0.2. What this does is that it gives us a test size which is 20% of our data set. Can I go on? Okay, I'm in line 37. Where do we start from? Where you want to start? Okay, you start from line. It's not this. Why? It's not this. It's not this. It's not this. From line 36. So just ignore line 3. So I don't make it on it. Then, after um, splitting it, I call the regre linear regression. Yeah, no, I call the linear regression function, which actually does. Oh God, I'm coming. So let me just. Do this. So what this does is that. It helps us to fit our train data, our X train and our X Y. So what it does is that it looks for the best intercept and the best flow for us. So what we did earlier that we had to do gradient um, descent again. Then afterwards, I decided to go on by comparing the SK length regressors coefficient and the intercept with the algorithms and um, coefficient and intercept. So let me just highlight it. So the analysis part of the code, I actually got the, um, I can't see this one. This line shows the um, regressor's coefficient which is at this part of the code. Okay, you know what? If you just run this thing, you will get this. You will get this. I can't it on it. Sorry, my laptop dragged stress removing to yesterday. So it's very funny. Okay, this is the coefficient. Then this is the intercept of the regressors Blah blah blah. You guys saw this and the other one will be the regressor coefficient. Then the other line is what we did. The algorithms um, coefficient and um, um, intercept. Please do you understand. Uh, Who does not understand? Uh, question. Uh, okay, question. Uh, See, let me just run it. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching. I actually got. Let me just. Uh, let me just run it. So you can be about to see what I'm What that does is that it flattens the transfer flattens. I fix the zero the first the first thing inside it. So that's why I use zero. So if I remove this zero index, blah blah blah, it's going to just return one to this. Can you see it? Okay. Line 14. Okay. And um, Rabu Labi, where do anyone want to call it? It's what we did in the algorithm in the second class, I guess, or the first class. 
so what that did for us was that it created the um the Tita Tita not and Tita work for us. I don't know if you remember. Any other question? So now we want to predict the profit using SKLM. So I use this um um Investor that predict the text, um, the test um, X to help us with predicting. So when I run it, so when I run it, this is. So why predict our predicted Y for our test? Remember that we completed our test. 20% on the initial data test. So that's why we don't have all of it here. So the next thing I did is I decided to construct or develop or anything want to use for it a new data frame of our actual Y and our predicted Y. <coughs> so I now had to compare the values. So if you notice this table here. It's showing not uh, the test, blah blah blah, it's comparing both of them. If you notice the first one, we have 4.416, and the other one we have 5.446. Um, the second one that I predicted, the second column that I predicted, why? Then I went on to plot a bar chart to show us that visually, which is this. So we can see the difference between the predicted and the actual Y. So I went on to apply um, normalized blah blah normalization sort of things whatever. Normalization. My keyboard is bad. My um, my um, mouse is bad. Drunk stress relieving TSD, sorry. Oh god. Stop. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, let's manage, manage, escape. Page up, page up, page down, page down, page down, page down. Okay, page down. Okay, yes, page down. So I use this formula. I use this formula, Z normalization. I can't remember the name, but they call it the statistics. But what it does is that it normalizes um, your X. If you notice, we had, okay, for this one, for this one, we had just one picture, which was just the um, size, I guess. Now, if we had a case where we had size and bedroom, number of bedrooms, if, for example, now your size, your size of the room was like maybe 200 feet square, then your bedroom size was like five bedrooms, or maybe you had two bedrooms. If you plot your, if you do your prediction, your model is going to actually favor your, um, your, your size because it has a larger value. So we have to now like normalize it so that it's going to like, like in the case of we have like multivariant, the multivariant case, we have to like uh, normalize it so that it's going to like treat both of them fairly a bit. But for this, you may not really see the impact in this, except when you do the normalization, or the um, multivariate, blah, 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 blah. So line 43, this is the formula I used. I subtracted x from the mean and x from, and divided by the standard deviation. Then I did the same thing that I did. I plotted, I um, constructed the, oh God, this must be the data frame that showed the normalized X and the um, predicted um, Y. I'm saying nonsense. Okay, yes. Then I went on to do linear regression on this again. Then I did the same thing I did. I split it into test size. So that didn't make any sense. Yes, yes, Earlier, you said you had split it to 2018. You worked on it 20, right? Earlier. This one. So you now split it to normalize one. Okay, yes. 
Yes, sorry, yes. So you now put that you normalize X yes. now. Yes. So it's what now? 80, 20? 20, yes, 80, 20. 80, 20. 20. So you now want to work on the 20 of the normalized Yes. So, any question? So I did the same thing in line 44 that we did earlier. Then I did the regression. Okay, yes, thank you. But the six is our actual and uh, predicted y for our normalized x. So when you compare it with the bar chart, this is what you get. I can't really show you very well, but this is what you get. So I decided to compare our normalized y and our predicted y to see if they are actually the same thing. And Thank God, thank God, we're the same thing because mm -hmm. if you really like the normalization does not mean they are changing the value. It does not really mean you are changing the value. It just means that trying to like make it reasonable. I don't know how to explain it to you. So this is the um, table. From the table we can we can see that they are actually not changing. Then this is the graph, the chart rather. So from the chart, I can explain. So the last question was rewriting the train function, which I didn't even think was correct, but I just did not talk about it. And it's just a function. It's not really an algorithm. This is the function I wrote on line 50. So that is the end of my
So it's better you get uh, familiar with the psychic animal, right? So that when you want to do more serious uh, stuff, you will be able to apply what you have done. So I don't expect you guys to be doing using psychic learning, media regression for some more complex projects. You get it. It's quite too basic to get. So but the same way you are able to attack uh, media regression using psychic learning, the same way you are going to do random forest, just that maybe you might pack in some new parameters, but it's the same process. You start changing the model, you get train the model, and do your model so it's like four lines or five you are done. You get it. So now we are doing logistic regression. Hey, I wanted to ask a question. This beautiful question has been uh, pushing my question. <laughs> so now we're still there, let's say that we also start with really good for uh logistic regression. So they kind of say so he said, for logistic regression, it's binary. Yeah. Okay, I'll talk. So now I give you the task. And uh, we are trying to do this. Okay, so let's start. Yeah. 
inside the first group there, some beyond three. You know them already, you know them without no typing them. You bring to them up and import founders as we did, put them up at the import macro and uh the part of that PLC. So Do you guys have the boot? No. 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 Okay. So do you have boot on it? Yes. So check for what three. It's in um, week eight. Yes, okay. I can do it for Gitop. On Gitop, right? Yeah. Three. 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 Yes. Four, six. So check for what three. It's in uh, week eight. Week four. Well, week eight. Week eight. Yeah. So normally, if, if I was the one, you guys would have access to this first. <laughs> so ask, ask her, I will teach first. You yeah. are not poor. <laughs> I said it perhaps. So you, it would force you to like go through it. That's the way to learn, honestly. Yeah, which which? Which game is which? Which? Yeah. So, but just follow along. If you have any questions, ask. So, but when we release the group, I will advise you guys to go through this one. Get. There's nothing as good as, uh, <laughs> but there's nothing wrong with modifying this code to what you understand. That's why it's new. If there's anything you can uh, understand from this code, it's nice for you to write it down. You don't put comments or write a note about what you understand. You get. It. It's okay. Okay. Hold on. Oh no problem. I'll wait. When you're ready, don't miss. No. You are ready? And then we want to print dot edge. What does dot edge mean? First time. If I put ten inside. First time. Who knows what dot shape does? Dot shape. Do I know? So we want to ask you that what can you see? Know that we have just 100 training examples inside the file that we read, our of txt that we read before. I'm going to be picking people to answer questions now because um, I found out that most times just two or three people are following the class and everybody else is next to them and it's not fresh. You can't waste your entire Saturday coming here and then you go back without knowing what. It is better. Okay. Even with just one or two things, you should be able to. There's just these simple things that make up what's happening. When you start actually writing larger things, you realize that you're not going to be bothered by this. You're not going to be bothered by the big things. Because so, so many people in the world are using the functions to do it. Nobody cares that you want to come and write function and you write it. But the simple things, the pandas, the dot shape, all the functions, simple things you are supposed to do, these are all matter. Um, I just started presenting my project in NLP and obviously I did the classified logistic regression at the end but I didn't have to write any 
to a serial. It's the cleaning of data and the basic parts that are the most important part of it all. So if you don't understand simple things I'm saying, please just try to ask me. I can answer I'll do my best. Who knows what dot dot okay. Who knows what dot at a red dot? Is you why you came back? <laughs> <laughs> You know that initially when I imported my file as the text, I had how many how many columns? Which are? But now there are only two here, and I just want those two to just be an array. Let me print it out so you get it. Depending on the scores they have, X1, their first score, X2, their second score, and Y will be their words. What's it? Admitted or not. So that's what we just did. So now we're plotting X1, X2, we find that maybe they gain admission or not. So we know the students that maybe you scored high here, obviously you're getting admission. So I think. Sorry. I think we plotted. X1, X1 across the X2s are in circle. So you will get to know which student will get admitted or not based on data that we've seen right now. So like when the machine learning models, it's a similar situation when you another student that has not seen before, you should be able to know whether students will gain admission or not based on the two scores that has initially. So, Remember that. Remember that. Do you remember this? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Remember it. So when you like are doing this, you do like adding more. Because of this X. Yes. Yes. So, if you are following, you already know that. So, I would like to think of the end of the 
extra. Our extra is already our X1 and X2 as an array initially. That's what the MP does as three and four. Do you remember? So now this thing is going to be like this. I'm just going to have one, 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 then our X1, X2, X1, X2. Yes. That MP dot one, I'm just adding ones at the front here. Do you guys have questions? Do you have questions? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Can we go back? Can we go back for here? Yeah. Yes. The question we have MP dot the other I would like to, I don't know what it means like in words, but it means for me, what I say it means is combine. So we are just combining this and this. Am I wrong? Good. This is right. So remember I told you guys there are different ways. And I told you, I remember I said, as you know, you see different ways of doing this. So I did it a different time. So I know that there's no one approach to doing this. So let me tell you guys. So when I was doing all this notebook, I didn't know one way of doing it. If you ask me to concatenate, I'll just say this is what it's right. But you can't just do that for um talk about the fact. You get it. So each time I check the internet, how do I combine two columns or two data together? Okay. I'll list something new. And when I see something new, I'm like, ah, wow, so I can do it this way. And then I put it there. And I remember there was a time that a judge came up and then he was like, ah, what's this one that you are doing? And then he wrote it to me, I was like, ah, another method. I think put it down, put it down, put it down. That, I think that was in the second class. You see, there was one method I was done and I was like, you can also do it like this. So I think you need this stuff. Yeah. And I use I use this. So when you're saying np dot c underscore this, you are you are joining um, columns together, right? So when you do np dot arrow underscore, you are joining rows together. Okay. You get it. So when you do this, you now pass in the two um, data you want to join together. So this is the ones vector, mm -hmm. and this is our x data, the x1 and the x2, right? So when you join it together, you have the ones and the x1. Yeah, good ones. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So if we are not using R yet. Yeah, so, uh, let me, let me draw it. So, so this is our x. This x zero. I have one, 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 one. So now we want to join this column to this column, right? So that's why we have n so So for now, let's say you have um, thirty-five, forty, or something, something, and then you want to add something, another row. You do not have something like n p. And the arrow So now if there's one group that was somewhere, somewhere, you want to do something, or maybe and the data is not complete, you get you have data for 2007, and then another data for 2008, and you want to join the two data sets together. So you are not joining the first set to the log column this time around. So you can't join so deep. So this is, uh, so what, let's say this is, uh, Prices, price, and the prices vary, and this is a population, that right? And the first, the one you're able to get at the first instance is for 2007. If you want to bring the data for 2008, right? You won't use column, you won't concatenate them with column, right? You won't concatenate them as rows. So you get where the R and C comes. Three questions. Three questions. Very quick. Why the argument is that it should be square brace? The argument is the MP.C. And the square brace is to our other side. So that's how they define it. So if I wanted to write my own, I might decide that maybe I want to use point. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
basic writing. When you're dealing with anything that's an array or a print form, that's where you actually see square root. Square, 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 if you remove this one bracket, that first bracket, it will give you error. I don't know why, but it will give you error. It will give you error. Yeah, I see the error. I will give you error. Why is there any case that is longer and can do the same thing as that? It's not like I said, it depends on how you want to do it. So much as you find it. And this stack, if I'm right, is a joke. Because this is meant for this stack should mean horizontal. Does it mean horizontal stack? <laughs> 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 so you know why you know why I'm saying uh, uh, you know why I think it's horizontal. Someone can take it off with you. Let's see that. You know why I think it's horizontal. Stack? If you use Excel when you have view, and I'm sure you don't know they don't like this. So B, B loop means looking up the value in the next column is correct. H loop means looking up the value in for the next Yeah, this part can So it means vertical and horizontal. So this is 100 by 1, 
you should join them both of them. You should join both of them together and get 100 credit to you. Makes sense. So that's the start for this project. This part of it, okay. The exact that's what I said. So they are different methods. We I used NP underscore. Um, NPC underscore. That's the non file Let's start. Okay, let's start to do one file. You get. Yeah. So there are different methods. Any one you want to do works fine. It's the same result. Okay. 
Should we go straight? So you see that the same. Is that it? Yes. So one over m right. multiplied by minus n p dot h. You take the transpose of it. The induct function multiply that this by is y minus n p dot log one minus h. Take the transpose. Take the dot product by this. Do you understand? I don't know how many of you are going to something about this submission. You don't usually find it here. Would you see that somewhere? It's not here. 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 Except if you, you cannot do it um, vector multiplication. If you want to do them individually, you do so. But if you want to use it the dot uh, vectorization, the dot product does the summation. So that's something you should observe. And also, okay, this summation sum from I to M, there's M on top. So sum all through the um, between the sets. So, this summation, you don't usually find in this um, function. If you have observed, like some about two or three people have actually bought me on Slack, right? they are looking for the summation. But the dot product, the dot product does the uh, summation. So that's what you should have in the back of your mind when you are doing vector, um, vector um, operations. So, and also, we should have so, okay, let's, let's just talk about this, um, this part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So, um, this is what you call a convex version. This is non convex. Something like um, y is equals to x squared, parabola. So, basically, this is for um, linear regression. This is what you guys have been doing so far. If you should apply um, linear regression for logistic, if you use uh, the cost function of linear regression for logistic regression, you are not going to um, you're not going to arrive at the good result. This is what you're going to have. You're going to have a non-complex function because of your what to um, one over one plus exponential one minus z, right? And um, yeah, so this is what you're going to have. And z is your transport x. This is this logistic function makes it non-linear. That is why you're having this um, non-complex function because of this function, this logistic function. That is why you're having this result. So it doesn't make any sense for you to use logistic, um, to use linear regression, your MSC for this problem. So in order to have to make the function convex, in order to make the function convex, that is where you have to change your cost function. What it means, you have, you have to change your cost function. So this is the cost function we are going to use. And basically, what the cost function actually means, okay, let me, before we go there, our, our normal uh, linear regression, you know, is 2n um, i 1 m, um, what's the, right, minus, let's ignore the super uh, square. This is what we have, right? Yes. And this tells us what, what does this tell us? Actual value. So this is more or less like you want this two value to be as small as possible, right? So the same thing is applied here. You want what you predicted. What you predicted, okay. You want what you predicted and what it is to be small. So the cost of what I predicted is this is cancerous. And it's actually cancerous. So the cost is supposed to be small. But if I predicted the, the, the cell is cancerous and it's not going to be cancerous, what, what's supposed to be the cost? It's supposed to be huge, right? So it's supposed to like assign huge cost for wrong um, wrong values, wrong prediction. You, you, you assign huge cost to it. So your model will know that, okay, this is wrong. So next time I'm going to bring that value. I'm going to, I, I'm going to predict the right stuff. You understand what I'm saying? So fine. This function, this is how you can run it. Next slide is expanded down. So, let's assume that we want to predict y. Y is equal to 1. It's actually cancerous. Let's assume that y cancerous means that it's actually cancerous. It's 1. And what we predicted is actually 1. So at that particular moment, what's happening to our cost? It's supposed to be small, right? Zero. So if our cost is, if we predicted um, one, and it's actually one, our cost will be zero, right? So this is where what we want. It is one, if y is one, and we predicted one, the cost is zero. But if y, if y is one, and we predicted something that is not one, as you are turning towards nearly the hour range between 0 and 1. So if it's not 1, it's less than 1. As you are turning towards anything less than 1, your cost will go up. You observe that your cost is going up. So that's what this graph is basically telling you. The relationship between your cost function and, and uh, what you can do there. You understand? So this is the cost of, as I'm going, to, as I'm turning towards 0, my cost will Increase. As I am making wrong prediction, my cost will increase. But if I make the right prediction, my cost will come down. You see, 
So that's what this um, stuff is basically talking about. So that's it. So your, as your, your theta zero is equals to if theta x is equals to um, zero, it's tending towards zero. It's not equals to zero. It's, it's tending towards zero. Our cost goes to infinity. This is what we call um, asymptote in, um, in mathematics. You don't necessarily have to like, touch the um, the y axis. You understand this graph now, right? You have any question? The cost function tells you how good your model is. So if your cost function is high, it means that your model is not learning well. You want your, your, your cost function to be as low as possible, but not necessarily zero. So now, if um, if I predicted, if something is one, I predicted it's zero. What do you expect that? You want that, that it signifies that yes, the, the, the should have, there should be like a huge gap. You should, you should penalize your model for making your own prediction. So that's that at that particular moment you have a huge cost. So you want that cost to be to go down. And for you to make it go down, you have to continue. You have to yeah, you have to update your uh, your parameters to tell you that okay, you know what what you did here the last time was like can come down. Keep doing that till you get to your, your level. Any other question? Many times that I understand exactly what you're saying, but you mentioned that the cup is not touching. Okay. Those one of those fancy things in mathematics that uh, oh. as as it as it looks here. Yeah. It's not going to touch. It's not going to touch the y axis. So I think the time uh, the, the time point of asymptote is to something like something like so. It's not going to it's something like this. It's never going to touch the the x axis. So any other question? No question, alright? Fine. Uh, sorry, I have a question. Uh, that looks like the cost functions are always negative in this case. So the less the less negative is the best that it was. Um what do you say negative? Yeah, so there's minus the cost of <coughs> So if H is if if for the first case now let's say H is 0 0.5, so 0 0.5 give us Zero point something, or then minus or maybe minus. We got that uh, that uh, that plus from actually uh, the log function. One of them is like this. Yeah. 
this graph. Yes. And this that question comes from that one. Oh, so this is for this is this is an I'm just trying to show you what I have asked. I don't think I have actually done this. It's never going to touch the x axis. So it's never going to touch here. To just continue, it's never going to touch here. Same thing as you to continue, it's never going to touch the x axis. So for the second part of it, um, we did convert the boss to 1, right? Now we're going to talk about since we have two classes. Either zero or one. So a situation whereby our um, actual value is zero and our prediction is either zero or one. What's it going to be like? So if your y is actually one and your theta, what you predicted, if y is actually zero and what you predicted is zero, what do you expect? What do you want? You want that cost to be what? Small, right? Yeah. But if what you predicted is one, what do you want? Wants it to be up, right? So, in that situation, if y is 1, if y is 0, and what we predicted is 0, the cost is small. And if y, as we tend towards 1, as our, as what we, as our prediction is not 0, as, as tending towards 1, our cost will increase to tend towards infinity. That's why we have uh, 1 minus infinity. But our cost actually tends towards infinity because you're never going to get to 1. I'm never going to get to um, so this, this has to I'm never going to get to that value. It makes sense, right? So this, uh, this is just like the graphical representation of what that cost function is. So just to summarize it, um, if y is equal to zero, if y what we, our actual value is zero, and what we predicted is what? Is is one. What will happen to our cost? It's going to be higher. But if what we predicted, if our actual value is 1, and what we predicted is um, 0, what will happen to our cost again? It's to be higher. So that is what this infinity sign actually shows. It shows that as you are, as what you predicted is 0, and uh, what you predict, predicted is 1, and what it is is 0, your cost is going to increase. And for the same thing for the other, inverse is the other case. But this is what we actually want. What we predicted is is y. We predicted the actual answer, the actual value. Our cost is going to be zero. You understand what this uh, this uh, this part is. <coughs> so um, to simplify that, I think is where I'm going to stop. So let me just. Um, I just did now, I just equated to y. So, 
let's do it, let's see how it goes. If y is equals to zero, what will happen? This will go up, right? We have oh, I miss it. Uh, we are supposed to have uh, one minus y. So y is equal to zero, right? So what will happen to this value? One minus zero is one. One times this um, value is the equivalent to what we have here, right? Yes. Yes. So this is for y is equal to zero. So now let's say y is equal to one. If y is equal to one, what are we going to have? One minus one, zero. This guy goes up. You have one here. What are you going to have here? You still have this value here, right? Same thing. So this is just like a compressed version of this, uh, this one. So now this is just for one instance. Let's do for all instance. We are going to have what? Summation.
to actually create an array of zeros in the shape of column zero one. So you don't need to this. That's what you're asking me to do. So even if you change it to one, it's still going to be zero. Change it to zero, it's still going to be zero. Do you understand? Okay, it doesn't matter. Do you understand? So to give you the cost function, what is the cost function? Explain it. No, no, because I didn't. Code, 
blue. Sunny, the same thing to the weather, uh, sunny, cloudy, rain, snow. We are dealing with multiple classes. This is binary classification. This is what we have been doing. Yeah. This is um, multi class classification. Then ask, are you going to tackle this problem? Okay, are you going to tackle this problem? Yes. Like you go jambo and so you take it. Or cross and so you take it. Then go jambo and so you take it. Do you have any conversation? Are you going to have like three factorial? That's it. That's the conclusion. Any other suggestion? Any? Are you saying something? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know what you have done so far? The binary classification you have done so far. Let's extend it. Let's make it bigger. I want to classify triangle, right? I want triangle versus the rest. I will consider this as others. I put this as one class. Triangle versus other class. So I do the classifier, still the same uh, binary classifier. These are others. This is um, triangle. The same thing, I'll do the same thing for the square. I'll do the same thing for the x. Does it make any sense? So I will, it's more or less like I'll just max this guy. Max the max one class. Do the classifier. Max this guy as another class. Do the classifier. Max this as another class and I do the classifier. These are like different hypotheses, right? But now, the question is going to be, if I'm going to test, how am I supposed to know the right one? It's actually the right one. If I let's say we want to print it, we have like a random, we have like a value, our test case is um, triangle. How are we going to know that as triangle? Are you just going to use a triangle classifier? Is it triangle and not the triangle? You're going to use all of them. But you know there's something about the triangle. If it's actually triangle, what will happen to it's going to the value is going to be high. Like the probability is going to be very high. So in that situation, in, in, here you are going to have values for this, values for this, and values for this. But the probability of, of that value being triangle is going to be very high. That means you pick what? Pick the maximum. Pick the highest. Does it make any sense? Yeah. So if you have different classifiers. So what is the difference if like you are doing one zero point seven, you know zero point six five? To be honest, there's only four softmax. So what softmax does is that it's going to ensure that all the values are between zero and zero and one. So you are going to have like the higher the value, the other ones you just take you just go down. It's going to have assigned high value to it. To, uh, to the correct class. So this is what we call uh, industry equation. So here we have uh, for the first, these are different hypotheses. Let's say our hypothesis is from zero to n, our case. Then what you just have to do, you want to make your prediction, you just select the maximum of all our, the maximum in all our cases, just pick the maximum, that's the right class. So this equation is, you guys can relate to the equation. Maximum of all our the, the class. Just pick the class with the maximum value. So you pick the i with the maximum value. <laughs> any any question? Makes sense now. Let's be honest. Come on. <laughs> so that's how you tackle. There's other ways we think we should can tackle, but this is how basically how you're going to tackle this problem. So. And what we got in the What parts? Just the yeah, part. that happens to be three parts. Mm -hmm. so three hypotheses. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, when you're trying to now uh, test as to what the value, which, which value falls into either of the three classes based on the I value. 
feel one day. So that's how I believe that we're going to buy it. Let's see. Thank <laughs> you. 